This evening, our Lenten observation comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight, we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples, but the central focus is his commandment that we will live out the promise embodied in this meal. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love and humble service to one another. As we listen to the story of Jesus' celebration of the Passover with the disciples, we are transformed by the mercy we have received and carry it into the world. Departing worship in solemn silence, we anticipate the coming days. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It was just before the Passover, and I thought Jesus would stay back in Bethany for the feast, but he insisted that we return to Jerusalem. Go into the city, he said. A friend of mine will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Strange. Well, Peter and I rounded a corner, and there, coming out of a narrow alley, was a man we didn't know. But he looked at us as if we were expected. He gave us the key and told us to help ourselves. So we made preparation for the Seder meal. Peter went into the market to get herbs, the matzah, and the wine. Herbs to remind us of the bitter slavery of our ancestors in Egypt. Matzah bread, not given time to rise, as our forefathers hurried away from their chains. And the wine, red wine, like the blood of the little lambs that marked the door frames of the Exodus. Like the blood placed on the altar, 
reminding us that freedom is not without sacrifice. It was the same meal as every other year of my life, with my parents, my grandparents, and for these last few years, Jesus. I roasted the lamb myself this time. Now, Peter, he's no good at such things. He barely got all that was needed from the market. He was too busy arguing over the price of olive oil with the merchants to pay attention to his list. Jesus and the rest of the brothers arrived right on time for a change. The sun was setting as they came through the door and the smell of the fresh spring evening was only outdone by the smell of the lamb on the fire, if I do say so myself. When we gathered around the table to eat, he began with the Kadesh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all nations and gave us with love, Sabbaths for rest, festivals for happiness, holidays for joy, and this day of Passover for our freedom. He stopped, and I thought he would cry. Then he spoke, barely a whisper. I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Now, <laughs> the entire table went to pieces, as you might imagine. And Jesus did little to explain or to comfort us until he took a slab of bread in his hand. He broke it into pieces and handed it to us and said, This is my body. Eat it and remember me. <clears throat> the bread was still stuck in my throat and questions still stuck in my mind when he raised the chalice and much the same said, This is my blood which is poured out for many. Drink it and remember me. The red wine, like the blood of the little lambs that marked the door frames of the Exodus, the blood placed on the altar, reminding us that freedom is not without sacrifice. For the longest time, we just sat around staring at each other, confused. The munching of the bread and our own pounding pulses were the only sounds that filled our ears. Finally, Jesus broke the silence, cutting the tension as he began singing, La Shana Habahabi Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. We all joined in the singing, though none of us knew at the time that for Jesus, there wouldn't be another year in Jerusalem. There wouldn't be another day. And for the rest of us, no day or year would ever be the same again. We followed Jesus from the upper room to Gethsemane. It wasn't far, a mile or so. So we twisted our way through the upper city, an alley here, a sidewalk there, until we made our way into that blessed olive grove. The rabbis say the trees in Gethsemane are as old as Abraham. I don't know. How could anything be that ancient? I do know that Jesus loved that place. We went there often to pray, to listen to his stories, to get away from the crowds. On that night, that dark Thursday night, Gethsemane smelled grassy like summer though only the blooms were first budding on the old trees. The men settled in a comfortable spot while Peter, my little brother John, and myself pressed deeper into the canopy with Jesus. He was driven on this night, as serious as I have ever seen him. He turned to me once and said, James, my soul is drowning in grief. Please, please pray for me and keep watch. But keep watch for what? I thought. There was so much I didn't understand. Finally, he pulled further away from us and seemed to collapse at the trunk of one of those primordial trees, his body twisting like its branches in agony. I tell you, I was terrified for him. But stronger than my confusion and fear was my exhaustion. 
Peter and little John fell fast asleep as soon as we knelt to pray. I cannot blame them. They had awakened early, gone ahead to Jerusalem, and prepared the Passover meal for the rest of us. So I know they were tired. I finally dozed myself. All that red wine, the heavy conversation, the night is thick and dark as the grave. What can I say? I fell asleep. Jesus came and gave us all a swift kick where we napped. Could you not keep watch for just one hour, he asked. There was such pain in his voice, stronger than disappointment. The man was desperate. He returned to his prayers and I could hear him speak of God's will and suffering and betrayal. It caused me to return to his words from the dinner table. One of you will betray me. Then it struck me. Where was Judas? He had been in the upper room. I was sure of it. He sat right there at Jesus' side. But I couldn't remember him on our walk to the garden. And it was then that I heard his voice in the distance. This way, just a little bit further, we're almost there, he was saying. And there were other voices, many voices. As I turned to wake Peter and John, there Jesus stood, his sorrow now replaced with a steely determination that was as frightening to me as my confusion had been. Judas arrived leading a company of angry men. They had arrest wards stamped with the seal of the high priest. They were armed with swords and spears and torches, dressed as a conquering army going to battle. We huddled behind Jesus like frightened sheep, waiting for him to strike them down. Judas stepped forward, his face illuminated by a flickering torch, and his suspense only heightened. Rabbi, he said, and he kissed Jesus on the cheek. Jesus, with a haunting, knowing gaze, fixed Judas in his sights, and with the look of pity or compassion or distress, said gently, my friend, do what you must do. Chaos descended. Those men fell on Jesus like predators on prey. All the disciples scattered like spooked birds. And yes, I ran. I ran as hard as these old legs could carry me all the way back to Bethany. I didn't know what happened until morning. But by morning, it was too late. What made that dark Thursday the darkest night of my life is that I believed in this man. I loved him like nothing else I have ever wanted. I wanted to stand when he needed me the most and I told him so. I told everyone. Peter, Peter was his reply. The devil will grind you into dust tonight before the morrow before the rooster crows, you will deny that you even know me. I couldn't believe he would say such a thing. And he said some sharp things to me over the years, but this, and in front of everyone, not me. Let everyone else sink with this ship. Haven't I proven that I will go further than anyone? Haven't I proven that I will go to the wall, to death if necessary? No, sir. Simon Peter does not go gently into the dark night. But I did. God help me, I did. After Judas handed Jesus over, I resisted. I pulled my sword and started swinging with all my might, and Jesus told me to put the sword away. He, he said it with such force, I, I just dropped the thing. Never went back for it, and I, I ran away. Yet, I found my courage and hurried to the home of the high priest, where I knew they would take him. I huddled outside, waiting, listening, watching. Then, 
They bottled me up, my comrades around the courtyard fire. Hey, you. Yes, you are with the Nazarene. I've seen you with him, a servant girl said, that nosy little nevy. I don't know what you are talking about, I barked before I even thought. Then another, yes, I am certain you are with this Jesus. You too are from Galilee, your accent gives it away. I was terrified of being arrested, so I was even more forceful this time. Heavens no, I said. I would never be caught with such a fool as that silly to Carpenter. But it wasn't enough. They ganged up on me, interrogated me, cornered me until finally I thundered, I swear I've never met the man. Jesus was just inside the courtyard door. I could see him standing there, the accused, shackles on his wrist like he was some kind of insurrectionist. Just as the rooster crowed, he turned and looked at me, not unlike he gazed upon Judas in the garden. Whether or not he heard my cursing or that bloody chicken cry, it was no matter. He knew, and so did I. As fast as I could, I'm ashamed to say I left that place. I'd like to say I cried myself to sleep that night. I wept many tears, that much is sure. But no sleep came that night. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to sleep again. It was, indeed, the darkest night of my life. James and a few of the others crashed through the door. It must have been after midnight. They were trembling with fear, breathless, unable to speak. Never have I seen men so shaken. Lazarus and I did our best to calm them, while Martha put a pot of sackcloth on the fire to warm their bones. It took a few minutes for them to be able to explain what had happened. And even then, it was too unbelievable to accept. Jesus arrested? Judas a traitor? The disciples scattered and ran? That's when I knew I too had to run all the way to Jerusalem to see things for myself. I grabbed my coat and headed for the door when Martha stopped me. Mary, please don't go, she said, as loving as a mother. I gave her a smile. This man who had showed me how to live differently, the man who had changed my heart, and my life was in trouble. I would not sit idly if there was something, anything I could do. So I covered the miles from Bethany to Jerusalem along the same road the fleeing disciples had just taken as fast as I could run. Along the way, I thought of the few times with Jesus, Martha, Lazarus, and me there was that dinner party years ago that began my conversion. Oh, Martha was slaving away in the kitchen. She's always been the good daughter. And I know I should have helped more. What with the dishes running onto the floor and the souffle threatening to burn. But I couldn't pull myself away from Jesus. He knew things. He knew God. He understood people. He understood me. And he showed me that I could know and be loved by God. Then there was that time Lazarus died. It started out as a cold, or so we thought, but the poor boy was gone in a week. Jesus came too late to heal him, and we couldn't understand why. Yet it all became crystal clear when he had the body exhumed and brought Lazarus back to life. I arrived at the high priest's house and met Peter running away from the courtyard. I tried to stop him, to talk to him, but he bulldozed along, heaving with tears. I walked quietly to a back door where I knew I could peek inside without being detected. Looking in, I had to stifle a shriek 
that rose in my throat. Though doubtful it would have been heard, the Sanhedrin and the priests were howling in bloodthirst. Take him to Pilate, they were screaming. He is a blasphemer. He doesn't deserve to live. They spit on him. They slapped him and kicked him to the ground. They dragged him around on the floor by the hair of his head. I wept. As the temple guards took Jesus away, I saw his blood splattered on the floor. Strangely, it looked exactly like the blood of the little lambs that marked the door frames of the Exodus like the blood placed on the altar, reminding us that freedom is not without sacrifice. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith from one generation to the next. Give your church hunger for your promises and the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it, those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service, especially to those experiencing homelessness, that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us. Text or call someone right now. Peace be with you. Stephen, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Shelby. Peace be Sandy. with you.
As we listen to the story of Maundy Thursday this evening, we recall that even as Jesus was abandoned and betrayed by his friends and disciples, he served them by washing their feet and sharing the Passover meal with them. May we follow in the example of Jesus' service as we who have received all of the promises made to us in Christ in turn give from our own hearts in service to our neighbors. Your financial gifts empower this congregation to follow after Christ's example of humble service to our community. Thank you for your continued generosity. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. trusted in you 
and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. My, My God. God. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. My God, my God. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evil do encircle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. Are my strength, hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. 
For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nation. Let's see. 